Hey everybody. Today we're getting started on limits. This is one of the most important ideas in all of calculus, if not the single most important. Let's start with an example. f of x equals x minus x cubed all over x. I've drawn the graph here for you. Now, it's clear both from the graph and from the algebraic definition of the function that the domain here does not include x equals 0. f of 0 does not exist, <laughs> dne. However, it's equally clear to us, just by looking at the graph, what's going on near x equals 0, near that hole in the graph. Namely, at, when x is close to 0, f of x is always close to 1. This is something that we can verify numerically. Let's take this function and just plug in values very close to 0. Here, I've done so from the positive and the negative direction. On the left, for instance, I've taken small x values, greater than 0, and let those values get closer and closer to 0. And as that happens, the function value gets closer and closer to 1. Similarly, when x is negative, as x gets closer and closer to 0 from that direction, f of x also gets closer and closer to 1. This is the notion of the limit. What happens to the function when x gets closer and closer to 0? We're ready for a preliminary definition. So we have a function f that's defined near a value x equals c, though not necessarily at x equals c. We write limit as x goes to c, f of x equals l, to mean that as x gets closer to c, f of x gets closer and closer to capital L. We can say that slightly more formally. Um, we can make f of x as close as we like to capital L by restricting x to be sufficiently close to c. Later on, we'll need a more technical definition of all this, but for now, this is perfectly sufficient. This is absolutely how you want your intuition to be. Um, a tiny bit more notation. Sometimes we're a little bit less formal and we write as x right arrow c, as x goes to c, f of x right arrow l, f of x goes to l. And that means the same thing as limit as x goes to c, f of x equals l. One thing I really want to stress about this definition, the limit does not care what the value of f of x is at x equals c. We're not just plugging in x equals c in general. We're looking at what happens nearby. Let's do another graphical example. Here I've plotted a function y equals f of x, and I want to look at a few limits. Let's start with a limit as x goes to 0 of f of x. So here we have to imagine x being slightly less and slightly more than 0. And we imagine getting closer and closer to 0 and ask what happens to the y values. In this case, as x gets closer and closer to 0, y is getting closer and closer to 1. So that limit is 1. It happens to be the value of the function at that point. Problem 2. Limit as x goes to negative 2 of f of x. We use the same logic. We imagine being nearby x equals negative 2, though not at x equals negative 2, and ask, what kind of y values are, are we seeing? For any x value very near x equals negative 2, we have a y value that's going to be just a little tiny bit less than 2. And as x gets closer and closer to negative 2, f of x gets closer and closer to positive 2. So here the limit is going to be 2. In this case, the limit is different than the value of the function. f of negative 2 is 3, but the limit as x goes to negative 2 of f of x is 2. These are different questions, and the quantities that we get at the end are frequently different. Finally, let's look at the limit as x goes to positive 2 of f of x. So in this case, the function has a jump. And that means we have different behaviors when we look at x values near 2 that are a little bigger and a little bit less. For instance, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, the values of the function, the y values, are getting closer and closer to positive 2 as we approach 2 along that parabola type shape. On the other hand, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, coming in along that horizontal line, f of x is going to stay right at 3. 
or to say it, I guess, a little bit differently, f of x will get closer and closer to 3. So there's no single value that x that f of x approaches as x gets closer and closer to 2. It depends what direction you come from. So this limit does not exist. There's no single value that y approaches as x gets closer and closer to 2. This last problem, number 3, illustrates an important point. In order for the limit to exist, f of x has to approach the same value from both the left and the right. So we've just seen one example of a limit that does not exist. Let's talk about the various ways in which a limit can fail to exist at a value x equals c. First is the one we just saw. The function can approach different values from the left and right of x equals c, like, like we just saw. Second, you can have a vertical asymptote at x equals c. As x gets closer and closer to 2 in this example, the value of the function grows without bound. There is no number l that this function's value is getting closer and closer to as x gets closer and closer to 2. Limit x goes to 2 f of x does not exist in this case. Finally, the function could oscillate wildly at x equals c. So in this case, I've drawn an example where c is 2. As x gets closer and closer to 2 here, the value of the function fluctuates um, back and forth forever between 1 and 3. It doesn't settle down to any particular value. So the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x here does not exist.